Welcome to this second in a four-part series of tutorials on working with different data types in Python. This part is going to look at the Boolean data type. And here's what you'll learn during this tutorial. You'll learn about what the Boolean data type is and how it was named after a mathematician named Boole. We'll look at Boolean operators such as greater than and less than and equal to. We'll look at how you can combine conditions using AND, OR and NOT. And finally, we'll look at two lesser used keywords, all and any, which allow you to combine multiple conditions. At any point during this tutorial, as always, you'll be able to click on the link at the top right of the screen, which appears about now, to get files or exercises to do with the tutorial. Or if you can't see that, you'll be able to click on the link on the YouTube page for this tutorial. But I'm going to vanish now, hand you over to Sven, and let's get started. So I think before we begin to look at the bool data type, I think we should take a few moments to pay homage to Georges Boole, or George Boole actually, who is an English mathematician who um, developed something called Boolean algebra. And the only reason I mention that is because otherwise you'll wonder why on earth Python data types are called bool. So I've created a file in Visual Studio Code called Boolean data type. And what I'm going to do is create a variable called the bears poo in the woods. Now this is an English expression, I've no idea if it exists in other countries or languages, and I'm going to set it to true, because they do. So let's have a look at the data type of that. So to do that, I can print out the type of this variable, and I just want to prove to you that a Boolean data type is indeed something which exists, and it's distinct from integers or floating point numbers or anything else for that matter. So a Boolean data type is stored internally as a zero or one, it is, as far as I know, the smallest possible data type you can create in terms of storage. You can also convert things to Boolean. To do that, uh, let's uh, take the Boolean equivalent of the number 42. Now, this is a fairly meaningless thing to do, but it will give you an answer, and the answer will be true. And almost anything will give you true, actually. So if I type in wise owl and do the same thing, that will still give me true. As a matter of fact, the only thing which probably won't give you true is the number zero. Zeros are always converted to false. So that's what the Boolean data type is. Let's look in more detail now at some of the things you can do with it. I've created a file called booleanoperators.py and we're going to use this to see what you can do with Boolean variables. So I think it's time we had some cats. Uh, let's create three cats. We'll have Annie, who's two years old. We'll have Neo, who's also two years old. I think technically they're twins, actually, if you can have such a thing for cats. And then we'll have Marv, who's just been born, I think, who we'll call Zero. So Boolean operators that you can use are as follows. You can use equal to, not equal to, greater than, greater than, or equal to, less than, less than, or equal to, and then in, and we'll have a look at in in a moment. So let's just do a couple of examples of this, of this. So firstly, we'll say, is Annie older than Marv? The answer to that should be yes. So to do that, we could say, if Annie is greater than Marv, yes. And if I run that program, I get yes. Let's see if Annie is the same age as Neo. This should all be very familiar just to begin with. So I can say if any, and then to test if something is equal to, I have to use a double equal sign. So if that's true, then I'll print out same age. And if I run that, I'll get same age. The in, uh, I guess, operator that I've just mentioned works like this. So we'll have a look at Annie's age. So I can say, whoops, if Annie is in, and then what you can do is specify a list of possible values in brackets. So is she either one, three, five, seven, or nine? And if that's true, then she's an odd age. Now I'm not expecting to see anything because Annie's actually two. But if I were to go back and add two into that list and run this again, you'll see I get odd age printed out. Because I don't like leaving incorrect things in, I'll take that out again. So that's basic operators. 
What we'll now do is look at combining conditions and we'll look specifically at and, or, and not. I think we need some cats. So I'll just paste in what I had in the previous file into a file I've created called combiningconditions.py. So let's see if, if both Annie and Neo are older than Marv, which is true. So to do this, I could say if Annie is older than Marv and Neo is older than Marv. So no stupid symbols like in other languages, just the word and. And if that's true, I'll print out both older. And if I run that program, you should see it's true. Let's change that slightly now. So I'll paste that in. And this time I'll say if either Annie and or Neo younger than Mars. And this shouldn't be true because they're both older. So to do this, I can say if Annie is less than Marv, and I just change the word and to or, it's that simple. And if I run this, I'll just change my message here so it's true, or so it's correct rather. If I run that, I don't think I will get that message because they're both older. And the only other thing you can do with combining conditions is use the keyword not. So what I'm going to do now is say, is Annie not older than Marv? To do this, I could say, start with my condition, which is Annie is older than Marv. And then I can put a not condition before it. Now, if you're uncomfortable with how to read that, there's nothing to stop you in closing your conditions in brackets like that. I do think it makes it easier to read what's going on, but you don't need to. So if that was true, if Annie's not older than Mars, then I can print out not older. And if I run that, you'll see I don't get that message because Annie is older than Marv. And that's pretty much all there is to say on combining conditions, except that there's a clever thing you can do with all and any, which is the last thing we'll look at in this tutorial. So I suspect many people watching this tutorial won't have learned much you up to, new up to now, but you certainly will in this, I think. We'll add in our cats. For some reason, Marv seems to have morphed into a one-year-old cat. I'm sorry about that. I don't know where that happened. And what we're going to do is uh, create a set of three questions and see if any or all of them are true. So I'll create a variable called tests, and it's going to hold a tuple. And my first test will be, is Annie the same age as Neo? That's true. Is Annie older than Marv? That's also true. And is Marv older than Neo? That's not true. So there's three conditions. Two of them are true. One isn't. I can test if they're all true like this. I'll create a variable called all true and set it equal to all open brackets. And then as you can see, you can pass in any iterable object. So I'm going to pass in my set of tests and then I'll print out the value of it just to see if that was true. If I now run that pr program, you can see it says false because they weren't all true. And likewise, what I can do is print out a message saying if any of them are true. And to do that, I can change my variable name to any. And I'll change my function to any. And that is true. And when I run this, you'll see it gives me true because it's some of them are true. So this is quicker than saying if Annie equals Neo and Annie is greater than Marv and Marv is greater than Neo. Or conversely saying if Annie is equal to Neo, Annie or Annie is greater than Marv or Marv is greater than Neo. Whether you would actually remember to use this in anger is debatable. I must admit I never have, but it's good to know.